Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Well, today we're going to be talking about a new topic, and it's one that I really hadn't considered in the past. And it deals with devices such as auto reversers, circuit breakers, frog juicers, and similar types of devices. And there are some downsides to using these, and that's what I want to share with you today in this video. So let's go ahead and move on and get started. Before we get started, I want to mention that the response to the video that came out on Monday, the new UK Monday series, has been pretty good. So for a first time video uh, on this type of a topic, I, th I was very happy with the response that I got. So we will continue to do those types of videos, at least as long as the response uh, continues to be this good and builds over time. So for those of you uh, who have watched that video and want to see it continue, this type of series continue, please talk it up with your friends and fellow modelers and, you know, try to get them to subscribe to the channel and watch the videos. That will help a lot in supporting the channel and furthering further production of videos like this. Now, another thing I want to point out. This morning, I got an email from Hattons in England saying that they had just got in a new shipment of the Great Western version of these coaches, like the ones that I showed in the video on Monday. So for a limited time, they do have them in stock again. So if you missed out on the opportunity to pre-order a set or even one of them, you can go to their website at Hattons. Dot co dot uk, or just do a Google search for Hattons, H-A-T-T-O-N-S, and you can go to their website and look for the Genesis coaches, and you can place an order there. Okay, enough about that. Let's go ahead and talk about the topic for today. So what I'm going to uh, first do is I want to go over examples of several different types of these auto reversers and circuit breakers and frog juicers and similar types of devices and talk about how they work and what is in common about them. And then once we've taken a look at that and looked at what factors are in common, then we'll talk about the meaning of it and what the importance of it is. And then finally, I'll talk about some things that you can think about doing in order to avoid any of the issues that might occur from using these devices. And they are significant in some cases. So I'm going to go ahead and focus down on the workbench where I've got these devices laid out and we'll get started. Okay, so I've gone ahead and laid out examples of auto reversers and circuit breakers and frog juicers, that type of thing. So we'll start right here with the Digitrax AR1 uh, auto reverser. This one here, as I said, is a PSX AR that's made by DCC Specialties. The PSXX is a circuit breaker, dual circuit breaker, their latest version from DCC Specialties. We have here a frog juicer from Tam Valley Depot, very, very popular device, and I've recommended them a lot in the past. And finally, the DCC Specialties Frog AR. So let's talk about how each works and, and what is significant. Okay, so the, the various auto reversers, the way they work is you always have gaps at the entrance and exit from a reverse loop. And when the wheels of your locomotive, the leading wheels, hit that gap, there can be a potential uh, mismatch of polarity. And it can occur either at the entrance or the exit from the reverse loop, depending on the last configuration. Now, when those wheels cross that gap and bridge that gap where there might be a polarity mismatch, that creates a short circuit. So immediately have a short circuit, and both of these devices here will sense that short circuit, and then they have either a relay or a microprocessor-based uh, relay built in that will flip the power to that particular section of track and correct that polarity mismatch. However, you will always get a short circuit when those wheels hit that gap. Okay, that's the first thing. Next, the PSXX circuit breaker. Now this acts 
to basically work like a circuit breaker in your house, you can use various combinations of these in order to isolate sections of your layout, power blocks in your layout. And when a short occurs in one, it will not affect power in the other. It will only shut down power to the block that is affected by the short circuit. But once again, they are responding to a short circuit on the track or a current overload because you set an operating current maximum for that block. And if it exceeds that, then they will shut down just like they will if there is a short circuit in that block in order to protect not only the command station, but also to prevent power shutdowns at other locations on the layout. Okay, finally, let's look over here to the Frog Juicer and the DCC Specialties Frog AR. Now what these do is, this little guy here is a single frog juicer, and what it will do is, it will correct the polarity uh, at your frog if there is a mismatch when the turnout is thrown one way or the other. But again, it depends on the wheels of your locomotive hitting that frog and causing a short circuit. And very quickly, it will sense that, and the Frog AR works the same way. They will sense that there is a short circuit at that point, and they will internally flip the connections or the polarity to that frog. And that will allow everything to go on running fine. But again, there will always be a short circuit in order for these to operate properly. And those are the limitations, and those are the problems. So let's talk about what the problems are. So, as I said then, all of these devices, in order to work and function and protect your layout and your command stations and your boosters and your decoders, have to have a short circuit. Now in the past, I've told you about and warned you about some of the problems that can come with short circuits on your layout. And I mean short circuits of an instantaneous duration. It only has to happen very quickly. Because if you have a short circuit, your booster is going to respond and it's going to start dumping power out trying to maintain continuity to that uh, operating environment on your track. And in, as a result, you can get voltage spikes coming out onto your track. You can get current surges coming out. Some of the problems that can occur there are that you can lose control of your locomotive due to these voltage spikes and current surges. You can see uh, runaways immediately. The train can just take off or the locomotive can just take off and it won't stop until it rounds the curve and heads for the floor. Before we go on, I want to ask you to take a moment to subscribe to the channel. It's simple, easy, and free. All you have to do is hit that little red uh, subscribe button and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Another thing that can happen is that you can have changes in CV settings. Just because of these voltage spikes that can occur and these current surges that can occur on your layout. So be aware of that. If you start seeing things, CV settings in your decoders that suddenly are different from what you thought you had, that could be the reason why. Now, another thing, and this is the most disastrous is, if you get these very large voltage spikes and current surges, it can actually blow a decoder. So if you unexpectedly find that you've got a blown decoder, I would suspect that right away, that you've had some surges of current and voltage spikes on your layout as a result of short circuits. So what can you do in order to avoid these types of problems and damage on your model railroad, even though you have these devices? Well, let's talk about that. So what can you do? Well, one of the realities of electronics is that electrons, and therefore electricity, moves at pretty close to the speed of light. So even if you have any of these microprocessor controlled devices on your layout, even they cannot respond fast enough to prevent those voltage surges and spikes from reaching your decoders. It's just going to happen. That's a reality of electronics and physics, and it's not going to change. Now, of course, you're always going to need auto reversers of one kind or another on your layout where you have reverse loops. So that's something that you have to just be aware of, live with, don't be afraid of, but be aware of it. You know, you can uh, get away with maybe two or three or something like that. Do not overbuild your layout and design a lot of fancy track work 
that creates reverse loops because you just potentially build in trouble for yourself in the future. So that's the auto reversers. You can't get around them. You can't live without them as far as I'm concerned. What about circuit breakers? Again, I consider circuit breakers to be something that are critical for your model railroad in order to prevent the kinds of problems that they're designed to solve. First of all, they protect your command stations and your boosters from overloads on the layout. So you have to kind of put these in and be aware of what's happening. Now I can tell you that one thing that is happening is the designers of these devices are getting smart and they're building smarter circuits. For example, with the PSXX, Larry Meyer at DCC Specialties designed these so they actually will limit the amount of current that goes out. Now, let me say that again. They put a limit on the amount of current that goes out. So even if you get a surge, this device limits the amount of current that flows to your track and to your decoders in a short circuit situation. And that's a good thing. Now another thing you can do is a lot of these circuit breakers allow you to set them up so that you can use a push button to manually reset them. In other words, when they trip, instead of trying to constantly reconnect power to the track, they will stay off until you push a button and they allow you to do that. And that way you don't have these constant little short circuits happening every time that it tries to reestablish power to the track. It just stays off until you finally eliminate the short circuit and then push the start button. So that's something that everyone should think about doing on their layout when they install these. And when they purchase these, purchase a device that will provide you the ability to manually reset instead of allowing it to automatically reset every couple of seconds. Because then you can have a whole series of little short circuits. But what about things like the frog juicers? I am limiting the number of these that I use on my layout. And the reason for that is simply to limit the amount of these short circuits. Consequently, on the Piedmont Southern, I have two of these controlling the uh, frogs at my uh, gantlet bridge uh, that I've shown you in the past. And I have um, two of these controlling the, uh, the, the polarity of each one of my double crossovers, my Walther's double crossovers. So for me, in the future, I'm going to continue using either the built-in ability on my tortoise switch machines or my IP digitals to allow them to automatically correct the frog polarity when a switch is thrown. You have to be aware that all of these devices work with and are based on short circuits on your layout, and you have to be ready to live with that, but also work ways into your configuration of your layout and the way that your, your layout is operated so that you limit the number of short circuits that can occur. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. Now, I hope I didn't uh, throw a scare into you as far as using these devices, because I will say that the potential benefits of using any and all of these greatly outweigh the potential negatives or downsides. You know, you've got to have things like auto reversers and circuit breakers. They just make DCC possible as far as I'm concerned. So you have to use them, but be aware. And if there are other devices available on the market that limit the current surge and limit the spikes that can occur, those are the ones you want to think about purchasing as opposed to devices that do not do that. So have a great weekend. Have a great week. We'll see you here on Monday with another one of the UK Monday videos and then next Friday with another video from the DCC Guide. Bye now.